So I've been waiting for this for a while and all of the animals have as well. We're coming out of 30 days of temperatures over 110 degrees and getting our first rain. You can feel everything take a sigh of relief, a big breath right now. As soon as this thunder calms down a little bit right overhead, I'm gonna go out and see if I can find some snakes uh, and show you what they're doing right now, which is drinking as much as I can. Now I'm coming down here to a place that I know that rattlesnakes have been spending the summer estivating. And right now they're probably sitting right outside of those burrows trying to catch as much rainwater as they possibly can on their bodies because it moves on, it comes and goes, and they can't wait for puddles to form to be able to take advantage of that. For all they know, this is the only water they're gonna get this year. So down there is where I'm going. I've been watching them for a long time. Um, I'm glad I'm home for this because <laughs> a lot of times I miss it, so. There's a diamondback. I mean to do that. Sorry. There's the uh, heat thing. Ah, alright. It happened. Sorry. Come down here to look at this. This is a southwestern speckled rattlesnake that has been drinking up scales. It's been doing so for a little while and uh, it's kind of run out of water. That's why its face is kind of down like that. And then right over here, there's another one hanging out outside, hoping for more rain. So in this little section, this is where they have spent the really hot part of the summer. And now this rain is getting everybody excited. They're gonna come out and do this and hopefully get more to drink. So I'm just gonna sit here. Let's see what happens. So here's what's happening. This snake has very special scales that are made for living in areas where there's not a lot of water. In the middle of each scale, there's a ridge called a keel. And that keel is that thing that gives it that rough feeling and that rough appearance. It also has hydrophobic coating on the scales. So what that means is that even in a little bit of rain, little bit of moisture coming down that snake is able to capture all of it on its body to then drink later so a lot of times people will think well hydrophobic doesn't that mean that it repels water well it does but it makes it beat up it makes it stick like if you sprayed water on wax paper it's not gonna run off it's gonna turn into a bunch of little beads of water so this snake is able to do that and take advantage of any little water that comes its way Hey everybody, I am headed out to Scottsdale right now to go remove a rattlesnake that was removed earlier today by the fire department, but I guess the snake came back because they just put it, you know, over the fence. So we are gonna go take care of it and we're gonna go move it out to some better desert to where it's never gonna see people again.
and I am hanging out with someone you've actually seen before on the channel. This is Burke, he's actually my brother. Uh, he runs the channel uh, called Catch It. So that's actually how I got my start with YouTube in general. Burke and I ran Catch It for a long time together and that is how Brian and I linked up to film for Rattlesnake Solutions. So it's kind of cool to be running calls together and hopefully we have a good night. Hi. It, it moved from about where it was. It moved. I'll show you where it was. Okay. It. Oh, so you do have a bucket. Okay. Yeah. You got a snake grabber or a, a makeshift snake grabber? Oh, cool. That works. <laughs> hey, nice little light colored one. Oh, hey, come on. You said it uh, moved like it wanted to uh, take a drink, you said? It was looking like. It's yeah, they do that. Yeah, so they have a uh, hydrophobic scales. Yeah. That what they'll do is, did he kind of make himself a little rain catch shape, yeah. and he was drinking yeah. off? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was right over here in the corner. Okay. And that's where he was this morning, and the fire department came, dumped him over the fence. And it was the same one. It looked. It must be his exact same. Same size, kind of sandy looking. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can let me look around for a couple minutes just to make sure too, if you're oh, yeah. if you're good with that. All right, well, here we go. I'm gonna go release this Diamondback. Look at that sunset back there. That is neat. Here's honestly not too bad of a chance. That light? No, I think you got it. And since it's sprinkling right now and it's been so long since it's rained, there's actually not a bad chance that we'd find another one doing that when we're out here. And that'd be pretty cool. All right, little Diamondback. Hey, bud, you just needed a drink, didn't you? Look at the sun going right through the rain. That's what that is right there. Rain's coming down and the sun's going through it. That is ridiculous. Take a look at this. Well, we decided to go on a little bit of a walk near the road to go see if we can find more diamondbacks out drinking water. And it did not take very long to find this one. It was drinking when I first spotted it, but I think it's more keen on making sure we're not gonna eat it. I think we're just gonna keep walking this tree edge and see what happens. All right, so Burke just found another one. Nice work. Oh, it's got that open so you can see that it was drinking because it's not a tight coil that you see a lot in these guys. It's kind of more of an open coil where the large coils are around the body and it makes a little bit of a rain catch. And you can see how the head is positioned there in such a manner that it can kind of just move around and drink water. Literally right next to that's the first one right there. Oh, oh, yeah, the first. Yeah, and then there's this dude chilling in the grass. You can barely see him in there, but he's there. I had a feeling this was going to be good because of the thicket right here, just on the right. I just ended my video clip here saying that thicket was nice. It probably came out, so it's like I'll check it one more time. Came up just past that dude over there. The first grass. one's there, and there's another diamondback rattlesnake right there. So, as so that's part of the reason that we love these big thickets so much for release is just because they harbor so much wildlife. It's so much insulation from the elements and this is what these things are hanging out in and waiting for this rain. And as soon as the rain comes out, they're ready. There you go. So we've got a king snake. That's cool. This is a California king snake. So the moisture often gets king snakes out and yeah, that proves to be true. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So we got a little baby Mojave rattlesnake on this road, which is kind of interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Tell it's a Mojave, by the way. By the way it is, yeah. <laughs> Stay off the road, little dude. That thing is tiny, tiny. Tiny. That's, I mean, that's brand new. This year's baby, for sure. Yep. 
this is what all these snakes have been waiting for for a long time. And this rain brings not only something to drink, but it stabilizes temperatures into something that's workable. So all of this waiting is now gonna pay off. All of the snakes that are gravid, pregnant right now, are going to start kicking off the cycle where they're gonna give birth. Sometimes that includes a shed skin. Um, a lot of the males are gonna start moving around looking for females that may have just given birth. And they got a lot to eat. They have a lot of drinking to do. They have a lot of moving to do. Soon all the babies are gonna be crawling around and for a brief period of time, the entire desert is going to be completely alive, running around in its prime season, uh, the wet season, the monsoon season. So this is just the start of that. And a lot of times, you know, it kicks off with one event, like what's happening right now. 